pray and go teach. All right, welcome to this next episode of Tutor Tutors, where we are looking again in biochemistry, done with the water for now. We're going to be specifically starting in organic molecules, looking at what they are and how and why they're important for us and for life. So first off, targets of the day. First off one is identify if a molecule is organic. So we need to understand what it actually even means for something to be called organic. Next, explain why carbon is a very important element. We need to understand a little bit about carbon because it's really, really, really special. And lastly, describe how a hydrocarbon interacts with water because we have to understand how molecules interact with water. Water, again, is so important for life that it's not going to just sort of like leave us because we're done with properties of water and we're done with talking about its structure. No, remember that you basically are mostly water and everything that's alive is mostly water. It's important. How do those molecules that are in you and me interact with water? Because that's what's going to allow us to exist. So first off, what is organic? What's it mean? Well, very simple. It means it contains carbon, period. Organic chemistry is a study of molecules that contain carbon. So if a molecule contains carbon, it's organic. At one time, they had this belief out there that organic molecules could only come from something that was alive, that we couldn't artificially make an organic compound in the lab. And today we know that that is false. That is totally not true. You can make an organic compound in the lab, it's easy. But the thing is, all life is based on organic compounds. Life is based on the element carbon. Why is that? Well, here we go. First off, it makes four stable bonds. Those bonds can either be four single bonds or one double bond and two single bonds or two double bonds or one single bond and one triple bond. The key is it makes four bonds. And carbon likes to bond to other atoms of carbon, thus allowing it to make some really complex structures. Like, here we go, a hydrocarbon. This is a simple hydrocarbon. This happens to be methane gas, CH4. So one carbon in the center, four hydrogens around it. Every single hydrocarbon out there only is made of hydrogen and carbon. And there are limitless types of hydrocarbons. The thing is, they're all nonpolar. Because remember, the difference in the electronegativities between that carbon and the hydrogen is only 0.4. And that means we categorize it as a nonpolar bond. So these bonds are all nonpolar covalent bonds. There is an equal sharing of electrons here. And we could add another carbon in. And here we happen to have ethane where we now have one, two, three, four, five, six hydrogens. So this is C2H6. Or we could just add another one, and this gets us to propane, which again, you know, is C3H8. Each of these are hydrocarbons, and they are completely nonpolar. And we could just go on and on and on. We could just keep adding carbons in that way. We can put it into a ring. Okay, so we could change this out and we can make it where the carbon goes into a ring structure. Again, remembering that each carbon makes its four bonds. So as a carbon, this carbon is bonded to two other carbons and two hydrogens. So here we happen to have C6H12 in a ring, right? So again, this being a non-polar molecule, but it is organic. And so you can understand how we can have such a great variety of molecules just by using two elements, hydrogen and carbon, with the backbone or the basis of each of these molecules being carbon. Now remember, water is polar. Well, nonpolar and polar don't mix. 
you probably have heard the saying, oil and water don't mix. Well, oil is a nonpolar substance. We'll talk about that in a little bit. That is a very specific type of molecule. But for right now, we're just going to be looking at nonpolars don't mix with polars. And so what that means is it's not that they repel each other. There's nothing in the nonpolar molecule to repel the water. There's nothing in the nonpolar molecule to repel the polar molecule. Remember, polar molecules are repelled by like charges. Negative to negative, they repel. Positive to positive, they repel. But the issue is there's no attractive force between the nonpolar and the polar molecules. Compared to opposites attracting, positive to negatives, they will attract. And so that means that this water molecule, it's not that it is repelled by this propane molecule. It's that that propane molecule is just sort of in its way of being attracted to this other water molecule. This water molecule is attracted to the other water molecules. It is not attracted or repelled by that propane molecule. It's just the propane molecule is in the way. That's all it is. And so the water molecules are going to orient themselves in such a way as to sort of get all together. Because again, those water molecules are going to be attracted to each other, whereas well, that nonpolar molecule, it's not attracted nor repelled. It just gets shoved aside in a sense as these water molecules are coming together. So in summary, molecules that contain carbon are classified as being organic. And many of the molecules that we look at in biology are organic molecules. And you might have noticed water, even though we need it for life, is not an organic molecule because it doesn't contain carbon. So just so you're aware, it doesn't mean that you need it for life because clearly Water isn't organic, nor is the oxygen gas around us, because that's just pure elemental oxygen bonded to another element of oxygen. That's just pure O2, okay? Next, carbon is special because it makes those four very stable bonds and readily bonds to other carbon atoms, making some really, really complex structures. And lastly, carbon bonded to hydrogen, just so we remember this for the future, it always makes a nonpolar bond. So carbon to hydrogen, that will be a nonpolar bond because they share their electrons basically equitably. That's it for this time. Be awesome, stay awesome.